Hi, Melissa. This is Kelly. Uh, I was talking to you about my process for how I deal with uh, large um, pieces, subway art, whatever you want to call it. Um, I can't remember your measurements, but uh, this will give you an idea of how I do what I do. And I kind of started over because I felt like I was taking way too long and might have been confusing. So what I do, this is 24 by 80. Yours might be the other way around, but still, it's too big for the um, silhouette in this, looking at looking at it this way, it's too big. The way I can, I couldn't cut it like this. Okay, so quickly what I do is I do, um, I bring in, I drag from over here, and I bring in half inch border all the way around. Um, ignore this top one, it's irrelevant. So I do a half inch border all the way around so that um, when I put it on my board, I'll also have a half inch border all the way around um, my board. Okay, so this is very simplistic, like I didn't get fancy with fonts or anything. Okay, so what I do is I type every single line of text all by itself, which I've already done here. Um, when I get all done doing that, I'll pick everything, uh, align it to the left, and then um, pull it all over so that the W, or the whatever, the true, the noble, the right, they all line up against this half inch mark. Uh, then basically what I do is I just start dragging them across. So whatever is, I drag it until the first part of the S touches my half inch and it's touching this uh, half inch line right here. And the W is touching this half inch mark. Then I just do that all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. My trackpad is giving trouble. I do it all the way down, just each each line. I just deal with it. Once I get all of my, uh, and you might have to move some of the, you know, move some of the text out of the way as you as you make these bigger and work your way down the mat. When I get all finished, I come over and I turn on my grid. And what I do is I make sure that this is all the way to the half inch. And then this one, it was, I think, a little bit short. It didn't come down to this line. So I just stretched it a little bit. If it had been, if it had been closer to this line, I would have made, I would have, you know, grabbed hold of the um, box and gone up to get it at this line. But it was closer to this line, so I just dragged and pulled it down. Then what I did was I took this line of text, the true, and I did the same thing. I just made sure, I just, I selected it and I just used um, my up arrow until it came to within, the, to this line. And the reason why is now I have a half inch in between each line of text. And I did that all the way down. Sometimes I had to stretch a line of text, a row of text. Sometimes I had to push it back up to make it a little bit um, squattier. And I just did it all the way down. So this actually is a little bit too high, but that's okay. And same here. You want to make sure you're paying attention. And clearly I didn't. The U is actually um, lower than the E and the R, which I didn't recognize. Same thing here with the O. But basically what you're wanting to do is get the bottom row of the top text and the top part of the bottom text so that when you so that they're half inches apart and they don't overlap right there okay so I do that all the way down and when I get them separate when I get them all adjusted the way that I want what I do is I go over and I pick a rec the rectangle tool make a rectangle and then I will grab it and I'm gonna put it here just because I don't want to cover everything I'll grab it and watching this number right here I'm going to click and drag until it might be, okay, so 10 is going to be it. 10.32 is going to be it. So I'm able to grab the, the whatever is and true. Um, and then drag it across. So the way that I do it is once I get it as far down it will go, which is 10.270. If I go any farther, it's not going to cut it. 
whoops. And then what I do, oops, I'm still missing, here we go. So then what I'll do is just go over here and I know that it's 25 inches, I need 25 inches in width and it's 10.270, I'll uncheck this and make sure that my box is 25 inches in width and apply. So now I just alt and drag, so I would have alt and drag, wrong one, let's go from up here, alt and drag, okay. So this next one, when I went, and you're gonna come down here with this top box, you're gonna go right to that half inch line so now you've got a quarter of an inch right here. There's a quarter of an inch between this row of text and the cut line, okay? So then I do the same thing. And the reason I alt and click and drag is so that I don't have to resize the width because I'm gonna, it's easier to resize the, um, the um, how high it is. So you're just going to grab it and come up here like this until you hit that half, that quarter inch line. So now, this basically is mimicking the one that's already around Noble, just to show you what I did. So now it's going to cut. You've got, a, you've got a cut line all the way around your text, all the way around your vinyl. If you're a little bit, you know, worried, you can make this a little bit smaller, but the way it's going to get cut you don't have to really worry about it. So just keep doing that. So um, some of them are going to be bigger than others depending on um, what you're what you're working with. So like this one for example, I'm going to alt and click on this. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to nudge it right like that. And I've got 11.54. I don't think I'm going to be able to go any further. I can't. So I can't get praise or praiseworthy. But I, so I'm going to come back up here to that quarter inch in between. So there's a half inch in between. So I'm going to go in that middle line. And so now I've got that much. So this is going to all get cut out on one piece. And then I'll click and drag. And now I just, I'll just nudge it. It's easier. Okay, and let's see what we got. So now, even with uh, uh, Philippians 4.8, we're fine. We, it's only 9.954. So on this one, you can just pull down where every end of your uh, board's going to be. And let's just say, for example, the end of your board, you got it exactly right on the money. So here's a good example. See how the I, the, the, all the letters at the top are right there at the half inch mark, but everything else is at, it's not exactly right on the money. You can just shrink it and make it a little smaller or you can bring it down and make it a little bit bigger which I think is what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna make it so it comes over here and touches my half inch mark. And now I have a half inch just like everything else in between such things and Philippians. So that's how I do it. Uh, and I get a half inch here. So imagine if you will that that's the end of your board. So there's your half inch, um, your half inch border. Whoops, picked the wrong thing. Your half inch, oh, hold on, didn't go back. There we go. Now we'll click and drag this down. So now you basically have your half inch border, just like you have half inch over here, half inch over there, and a half inch at the top. All right, so what do I do next? I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my grid because it's annoying. And I'm also going to pull these away because I don't really need them. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab all of that and I'm going to pull it away. Okay. Then Noble is next, so you need Noble and the box. You need everything. Oops, didn't get the box. If you want to group to keep from having any problems, go ahead and group. It's probably a good idea because you spend a lot of time getting everything lined up. Don't group though until, yeah, there you go. You want to make sure you've got the right stuff grabbed. Um, oh my goodness, my 
trackpad is a crazy mess. All right. Uh, I think the next thing is uh, excellent. There we go. I'm going to right click, be a lot quicker. Maybe. There we go. Group. And then the last one will be this. I'm going to group it before I move it. There you go. So, all right. So, here's how I do my thing. So now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to resize my. I'm just going to do. Um, we'll leave it at 60. We can add to it. It's. I'm not using a mat. And I don't, and I can show my cut borders. I don't think I need to show them, but I will. I think everything's probably small enough. All right. So, and I think if I read your um, post on Facebook correctly, you have a tray to hold the your roll of vinyl. All right. So I don't know how you uh, stencil your boards, but I stencil my boards. I weed out all of the letters. I don't take away the vinyl the big pieces of vinyl. Some people will put the letters down, paint over, then peel the letters off. I don't do it that way. I actually make a stencil. So I peel out everything you see is gray. Um, I peel, I, I weed that out. Okay, so we'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Okay, so I flip it. And I just in case you don't know, you hold down your shift key as you're turning and it'll snap. It snaps nice and straight up and down. And then I just place it on my deal here, on my canvas. Now, here we go, okay. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna just flip it, whoops. There we go. And I'm gonna drag it down here like this. Bring it over here. Doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be able to get anything over here anyway. This will end up being scrap. And I just keep doing that. I just keep flipping, turning these and putting them on my vinyl, on my canvas here. And so my whole idea, which um, I should have given you my disclosure before we even started. My whole thing, and so you'll see you're going to need more than 60 inches, so we can go to, you know, 100. And, whoa. There we go. And just keep adding your pieces. If you get to 10 feet, it won't. you'll have to just start a new one. Cut out what you've got and start over. Don't overlap like I almost did there. You'll, it'll cut it. Okay. This one's good. This one's a little tight. So this one to me looks like it's in the cut area and I'm not happy with that. So I might go back in there um, and change that, that back because this is a little bit big. It's a little bigger than I wanted it to be. Okay, but anyway, whoa. We'll just leave it like that. Okay. So basically what I, my whole idea here is, this is now out of whack, there we go. My, my idea in coming up with this, I'm not a professional, I wing it 100% of the time, um, is this is gonna cut. When this cuts out, it's also gonna, not only is it gonna cut your letters, but it's gonna cut your vinyl, okay? It's gonna cut this rectangle all the way around the vinyl too, all right? So when it does that, this is what your piece is going to look like, just like this, right? And you've got your vinyl all the way around, all the way around. Now the only difference is what I do, one of my next steps. So I cut it, I I cut it. It's going to cut. It's going to cut both your letters plus your rectangle, okay? And then what I do is when I take it out of the, when it's done all of its printing, these probably need to be a little bit farther apart just to be on the safe side. Because what I do is I come in here and I'll use my um, paper cutter and I'll cut in between each text box that I've made. 
And then my first, that's, that's the first thing I do after I've taken it out of the silhouette. The second thing I do is I peel all of this off. So imagine none of this is here because remember I've cut it with my paper cutter. So we're just dealing with this piece right here. So the first thing I do is I peel this away. It'll peel all the way around here. It'll peel anything that's over there. And it'll peel right here. And what you'll be left with is you'll see the backing of your vinyl, you know, the, the slick paper. And then you'll see all of this. The reason I do that is because then I use a straight edge ruler and an X-Acto knife and you can, I use black vinyl. You'll see the difference to be black vinyl here, white slippery stuff, that's the backing there. I lay my straight edge on that cut line, on this line right here. You'll see the difference, it'll be super easy. And I use my straight edge and an X-Acto knife and I cut all the way around my rectangle. So now I've cut around my rectangle And I'm left with this piece right here. All right. So that's what I'm left with when I'm all done. Is this all of these pieces? Every single piece will look just like this. It will be all black. It's the same exact width as your board. So now all you have to do is one of two things, depending on your process. I weed out the letters. Some people weed all of the background, leave the letters, put it on their board, paint over the letters, peel the letters off. I don't do it the way. So my next step would then be to weed all of the letters. Then I put my transfer tape on. Once my tra and I do it and I, I do it like this. Weed, weed, weed. I weed everything. Then I come back in, put transfer tape on everything. And the next thing I do is I, once it's got transfer tape on it, I flip it upside down so that you see the shiny back part of your vinyl because this will it'll this will be all the way around. Remember, this is your piece that's your sizing. Flip it over. Use the X-Acto knife and a straight edge and make sure that your um transfer tape is exactly the same size as you see right here. We're right to the red line. When you're done doing that, you then have, let me get rid of my cut lines, get everything off of here. When, you, when you've done all of that, you have all of these pieces. This is your board. You've painted it, you've stained it, you do whatever it is you do to get it ready to go. Now all you have to do is come up here and place your rectangle flush with the top of the board and flush with the sides of the board. Bring your next one in. Whoa. Do the same thing. Flush with left and right. And this time what you're going to do is you're going to butt it up right against the bottom of the top triangle. And now you're back to looking exactly like you did when you designed it. You have a half an inch in between each line of text. You have a half an inch all the way around, top sides and the bottom, although in this case it didn't really matter. Um, here, this one. So when you're all done, lining everything else back up on the board, You're then almost ready to go. Well, for me, I'm almost ready to go. The last thing I do before I paint my, my letters, and I use spray paint most often when I do um, subway art work. Um, I paint my board, if it's black, let's just say. I use black matte spray paint. I spray a couple coats on. Um, after the coats are sprayed on and dried thoroughly, I sand it with like a fine grit sandpaper. And then when that's all done, I go back over it with um, a fine 
um, steel wool. And that basically kind of like buffs my board and it gives it just a small amount of, um, it, I burnish it basically. It gives it kind of a, if I say shiny, you're going to think that's crazy, but it's not shiny. It just takes the paint from being flat with not uh, getting any light reflected to just being able to get a little bit of light reflection on it. It's really cool. And then um, when I spray paint my letters, I use a flat paint. Okay, so now you look just exactly like you did when you made your board, when you made this in silhouette, but except now it's on your actual substrate. It's actually on your board. And now what I do um, is I will peel off my transfer tapes, peel them off, now if you want, you can peel your transfer tape off one at a time. Just be careful that you don't mess with the vinyl so that this bottom line gets squirrely. But anyway, I peel off my transfer tape on all of them. And then what I do is where this line is, where these two butt up against each other, I um, tear up pieces of painter's tape and I lay painter's tape, it's kind of a pain but I put little pieces of painter tape all the way across this so I don't get any underspray, which, of course, I found that out the hard way. So that's my other piece of advice. So that's it. That's how I do oversized project. And it would, it basically will work with any size you use. Um, the only thing I don't do is, um, well, if you go past the 10 feet, you just have to pull your designs that, that won't fit on your um, on your canvas for cutting if you if it's more than 10 feet just pull the rest of it aside cut everything that's less than 10 feet then grab all that stuff pull it over then bring the remainder back in and then finish cutting that but this is a really for me it worked great because I struggled I was like it was so hard I couldn't see what I was doing it was a pain in the booty. The other thing is I use clear um, transfer tape. I basically use adhesive shelf liner for my transfer tape. And that's nice because I can see the I can see everything real good through it. Some of the transfer tapes are kind of hazy. Um, but anyway, that's what I do. And it makes it a lot easier. It kind of takes the, the brain work out of it. And uh, it, it makes it great. Oh, one more thing. If you, if you want... Of course, the way that it's done here, you don't really need to. But if you do want to make little um, hash marks on your board just to ensure that you're, you know, a half inch away on all the way around, you can. But with these um, rectangle cut boxes being the same width as your board, you, you don't have to worry about it. Right now, this actually says that it's 25.663, but we're not going to go there. We're going to just assume that that's actually only 25. But that's how I do my thing. I hope it helps you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. And I hope to see you around Facebook. Thanks. Bye.